So let's play a little bit with the composition methods. We are not going to use them because actually Arima-like methods are have taken over this sort of the composition techniques, but I think it's instructive to see how they perform. So let's create a script. I'm going to use library fpp2 because I'm going to use some data sets from there and also a library forecast. Oh, sorry, fpp2. Okay, here we go. So there is a there is a data set called Air Passengers, which becomes to actually to base R. You have information in the help, so you press help F1 here. So you can read a little bit about this data set. So let's take a look at it. Let's use autoplot Air Passengers. And here we go. So you can see a couple of interesting things. Of course, you can see this trend, the, 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 the growing trend of the data series. You also see periodicity, and also you can see there is some increase in the variance. So the variance is higher at longer times than on shorter times. So the first thing that we are going to do is try to decompose using the basic function decompose from the forecast model. So let's call dec. This is a new library, a new variable. Decompose air passengers, and this is going to do an additive decomposition. Okay, let's auto plot this. And here we go. So you can see this is the original signal. This is the trend, which is, I think, nicely captured. This is seasonality, and there is a lot of noise. And actually, if you take a look at the residuals, there is something that is not working here. A couple of things. So you can see that the variance is increasing with time. Uh, this is obvious because, as I've mentioned before, the variability here is also increasing with time. But also, you can see that the seasonality is not well captured because you still see some periodicity here so actually if if we check the residuals check sorry check residuals reminder reminder is a function that is going to give us the pre precisely this part of the series of the decomposition so reminder decomposition and you can see this is the reminder and you see these patterns of correlation that that means that we are not capturing properly the seasonal part and also you can see that this is not bad but we still have some outliers here and there. Okay, so let's try multiplicative decomposition. So let's repeat all these commands. And here we're going to use type equals multiplicative. Okay, so here we go. And let's check the residuals. Not a great improvement. And why is that? And again, if we go back to the data, you can see that the data has this uh, strong. I would say heteroclasticity in the sense that the variability is growing with time. So what about using box cog, so a logarithm? So let's play simple. Or let's define first a new data set, a new time series. AP is the logarithm. This is passengers, this is not money, so the natural logarithm is okay. Here are passengers. And now let's plot this. Okay, things are better now. You can see that the variance here and here are almost the same. So let's take a look at the composition. So let's compare our data set. Let's call these. Well, le let's do things first. Decompose AP. And here we go. Much better. You still see some patterns that are not captured by this seasonality. But I think it's much better than before. Okay, let's move on a little bit. Now let's use more advanced methods. Advanced methods. We're going to include the library seasonal view. Seasonal view. And here we go. So first things, let's use another data set. I'm going to use elec equip. Okay, here you can see a data data series, and this is monthly series, so you can have uh, 12 months and, and information for different years. If you take a look at the data, this is included in FPP2, and you can read a little bit about this information. Uh, basically, is the, the is related to the stage in manufacturing in the Eurozone, okay? So first things first, uh, let's do some auto plotting. And here we go. So we have the series, you can see that we have the typical predicity if anything that is related with sales, because mm, typically mm, se selling patterns are more or less the same in summer, every summer and in winter and so on and so forth. And now let's repeat again the basic decomposing just to compare. So decompose and let's see what happens. And here we go. So this is the data, this is the trend, the series and the reminder. Okay. Now we're going to try this method called X11. X11. So let's try the library, the function CS, elec equip X11 equals quote quote. 
and here you have the output okay I'm going to skip a little bit for in this first part of the course uh, the analysis of this information so let's do some plotting and here we go so if you compare this let's plot again this part okay if you compare both methods they are almost the same what does it mean that this advanced uh, technique is not uh, much an improvement because remember that one thing that we were doing was trying to relax the seasonal part so here the seasonal part is completely flat you can see that the, the, the minimum and the maximum at every period is almost the same and CS is basically SITS is basically trying to and, and X11 the same is trying to modulate it a little bit so this is a kind of improvement what's the benefit of that the trend is almost the same the benefit is in here so you can see that here you have some correlations uh, the, you, when you have these points in the residuals which are a lot of time they are above zero a lot of time they are below zero this means that you have strong correlations and in this case you don't see that so mm, the, the good thing with this idea of relaxing a little bit the seasonal part is that you're capturing better this this seasonality okay you still have some outliers but uh, no, no method is perfect okay so let's repeat the same for the seeds method remember this is x11 this is the seeds method alone we use the same function okay and here we go so more or less the same so we still have some modulation here it's not very clear but you can see that here this is deeper and then increases a little bit down again and then a little bit up and you still have some correlations yeah. so th in this case the method is worse than before and I still you have this outlier we can try to check the residuals for the reminder of this decomposition so let's copy this inside and here you go so you can see that we are capturing much better this correlation so we still have some long long lag correlations and but this is maybe uh, a matter of chance if you remember in the other day in class what we discussed these ideas we were using random numbers and with random numbers you sometimes have these bars that escape the blue lines okay so this is a good fit we still have this outlier which is related to this point and sometimes it's not a matter of removing outliers it's trying to understand what happened at this point in time so by the end of 2009 let's play a little bit with LOES remember STL is a seasonal uh, trying to find a seasonal training using LOES and the method that we're going to use is the function STL so the same idea so let's let's take this function again oh sorry we need to give the argument for his window in this case we're going to see that this is periodic, periodic. okay here we go so this is the output Basic, basically we are splitting again in the trend the seasonal part and the reminder so let's auto plot this or, or let's plug this into uh, well let's auto plot this directly Oops. and here we go so again you can see that this is uh, smoother because we're using loss lowest curves uh, the seasonality is more or less like in the basic uh, decomposition method so this is flat above and below and because of that you still have some correlation so in this case the method is not so good can we improve a little bit this thing yes actually we could try to to have a smoother view of this curve and we have this parameter which is t window let's play with i know let's say 12 lakhs a year okay and let's see what happens if you compare you still have more or less the same but we have a little improvement so we have less correlations we have less bars which are uh, clustered together in this part of the graph let's increase this a little bit let's try a couple of years for of a smoothing now you can see that the trend is much smoother okay compare this with the original one okay and now the residuals are worse and why is that because we are putting so much emphasis in trying to capture the trend that we are not not capturing properly the signal so basically the difference between these two curves is that large that still we are capturing again correlation so the problem with STL is that finding the right lag the, the right window of correlation is hard and this is a choice that has a huge impact in, in the analysis of the data okay let me show you a couple of things before finishing this video and one that I love is this idea this function view that comes with the library seasonal view so if you take uh, x11 or seeds uh, let's plug this here you're going to love this okay you see that we have a new window here actually you can open this in a browser so if you click here then you see this browser and uh, let's shrink it this a little bit and here we go so you can play a little bit with the data you can have the original data like like this one and you can play 
change the method. For instance, use x11, you can see the difference are minor. You can actually pre-transform, so you can take the logarithm, like in here, you can see what happens, or you can do this automatically. You can actually check for outliers, so try, try to remove outliers here and there, okay? And this is really nice because you can explore the data. This is used actually a lot when you're playing with with financial data. And actually, the, remember that the seeds uh, method was created by the Bank of Spain. And this is why this is has a typical flavor of the stock market series. The other thing is this idea of plotting at the same time decisional adjusted function or version of uh, adjusted decisional adjusted version of the data versus the, with the data. So let's use autoplot for like equipment series original data and then let's add another layer auto layer and we're going to use seasonal adjusted let's play with decomposition the basic decomposition again decompose select equipment and this series is going to call sys adjusted here we go so you can compare the original data which is in, in red with this blue line which is decisional adjusted and the idea is that you have removed these spikes that, that these spikes are not wrong basically these spikes are have information about seasonality, but sometimes you only want to, to know about the data and, and how is the data related with ups and downs on different years. So, so I think it's a nice way to remove this information. So you have s still you have a rough data set, but this, this roughness, these fluctuations are implicit to the market and not something that is correct by, that not correct by seasonality.